Normally, when we store dry goods, we want them to be 10% or less moisture. Now, popcorn is usually about 13 to 15%. And if we've stored it with a, an oxygen absorber, have we created a problem? So this has really been of a concern to me because botulism is a huge risk, right? And we want to make sure that we keep our family safe. So um, a lot of you have asked us this question and I just didn't know how to answer it correctly. So after a lot of research and prayers, we met um, Joseph Bell, who is a food scientist who was able to answer this question for us. So today we are going to interview him and he'll be able to answer the question, is this going to be safe to eat? Can I store popcorn in a Mylar? Check this out. Hey, Browner Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Kyleen. And we have had this huge flood of questions come in about storing popcorn in long-term storage. The problem with popcorn is that it's 13% moisture and the recommendation is 10%. And so we've been searching everywhere, trying to find an expert or somebody who could shed a little bit of light um, on the safety of this. And we didn't want to give you any false information. And so I was so excited when we came across Joseph Bell, we did a presentation for his community. And let me tell you just a little bit about him. He is a food scientist. He was actually um, the principal scientist. He's retired now, but he was over research product and development for over 30 years. We're gonna have a conversation with him about popcorn, but one of the things that we wanna make clear right up front is that while Joseph is an expert in this, you are ultimately responsible for your family's safety in everything that you do. We will leave some of the links to the research articles that Joe has provided for us, um, but ultimately the, this is on your shoulders, right? So let's get started and chat with Joe. Thank you so much for being here. Glad to be here. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to your audience before we jump into the questions? I'm a food scientist. My focus in research was not popcorn, <laughs> but, uh, but I was able to do some studying on the topic. And so I've, I've learned this week as well as everybody else. I can really appreciate that. So what are the potential concerns that we have when it comes to storing popcorn? I mean, things that come to mind for me would be botulism, um, mold, things like that. What, what are some of the issues that might be a problem? Popcorn has uh, a fair amount of moisture. Uh, you, you said uh, 13%. It can actually be up to 15% depending upon variety, the age, the treatment, et cetera. For any natural product, there's always going, going to be a range. It's never going to be precise. Botulism, in order for botulism to grow, it has to have a lot more water than popcorn's going to have. Think of it, there's a, there's a parameter called the water activity, not percent moisture, but it's more like the ability, how the water is free enough to react with its environment. Is it bound up or is it free and available? The, the highest water, a glass of water has a water activity of 1.0. It is the standard. So everything else is compare, compared to pure water. In order for botulism to grow, you've got to have a water activity of 0.96. Unpopped popcorn, has a water activity between 0.86 and 0.89. So right off the bat, botulism is not going to grow there. On the other hand, there's a lot of other bacterias and yeasts and molds and things to be concerned with. Bacteria in general, the, the lowest water activity in which it can grow is 0.86. Water activity, again, it's uh, for pop popcorn is uh, between 0.86 and 0.89. On its surface, that looks like a challenge. The reality is it's not as big a problem as it is because popcorn is not a solution. It's a seed. It's got a husk. Inside that husk is higher moisture, but that husk is water impervious. You know, when popcorn pops, the water inside that husk builds up. It gets hotter it actually builds up to about 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is above boiling point, but that husk has got the water under pressure. And so it builds up to about 135 PSI inside a kernel of popcorn before it pops. With that in mind, 
um, mold bacteria. You can't get inside the kernel because of that husk, that water impervious membrane that's going that's outside of it. That's the good news. The bad news is there's a pinhole in the end of that husk where it meets the, the, the cob. And that moisture can very slowly leak out. And it does on sh during shelf life. And as a result, if you don't have enough moisture inside the, the center of the kernel, popcorn doesn't pop. Um, in fact, it can't, it, because it doesn't, it can't pop, it can't get hot enough to uh, gelatinize the starch. And you end up with a combination of popcorn kernels that either don't pop or they pop a little bit. They just kind of, you know, and the, the, the starch doesn't really become soft. It stays hard. Obviously, popcorn kernels are, are, are the popped popcorn is fairly soft. That's because the, the, uh, the starch had time to gelatinize inside uh, the, the kernel at, at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and 135 PSI. That's, that's high pressure and, and high temperature. Um, so that's why um, the proteins are denatured. The starch is soft. But if there's not enough water to do, to do that cooking, then you end up with hard things, that, hard kernels that you can't really eat. So as popcorn is stored over time, it's going to dry out in, in my language, right? It's going to dry out a little bit. And so it might not be able to pop as well, but could we still grind it and make it into a cornmeal? Yes. So, okay. Okay. Uh, but we're not looking at a risk of something really bad like botulism. We're just looking not. at normal your, your, bi your biggest risk is mold. And I think the risk of mold is also minor simply because it's a pinhole at the end of the, the kernel. It's letting that water out real slowly. And uh, inside the kernel, it's a sterile environment, commercially sterile. By, the, by that, I mean no pathogens inside there. There's nothing that's going to make you sit inside the kernel. That is great news. So um, for those of our viewers who would like to store popcorn, let's talk about ideal storage conditions. So we want it in an airtight container to protect yes. it from the outside environment. Both vacuum sealing and the use of an oxygen absorber would be fine. Is that correct? Yes. And the purpose, purpose of the oxygen absorber is, to, is flavor. The flavor wants to oxidize and you need to prevent that. Otherwise, it becomes, it's called stale. It just doesn't taste good anymore. And that's your biz, biggest risk. It's not a safety problem. It's really a quality problem. On the other end of that, I'm thinking um, desiccant. You definitely wouldn't want a desiccant packet in there because that's going to absorb moisture. And to draw well, it out. Re really, the, that's the, what I'm the thinking. The vacuum's going to do the same thing. Um, so you really don't have to have a vacuum either. The stuff you handle the product with, and it's going everything that contacts the product needs to be absolutely dry. If there is a drop of water there, a drop is an ocean to a bacteria or a mold. If you have a drop of water there, that's enough to cause spoilage of everything in the container. So absolutely dry. Clean, clean and dry. Clean and dry. So we're going to take that container that has either an oxygen absorber or we could vacuum seal, right? But it's going to, it might take out some of the moisture. So you recommend an oxygen absorber over vacuum sealing for popcorn. Yes. Um, and then we're going to store it in a cool, dry location away from any light to degrade it. What do we think the shelf life is for popcorn, the longest that we'd be able to get out of it? I have some that I stored without an oxygen absorber, just in a peat bottle, a plastic bottle, and it was 10 years old. 2006, it was older than 10 years oh, old. Oh, yeah. 10, 000, or it's 2020. So it was 17 years. 17 years. And it would still pop, and it was fine. How did it taste? I thought it tasted fine. I, I popped my popcorn and coconut oil in a stove top popper. To me, it was just fine. Okay. Your so, only risk is oxidation. <clears throat> if it starts okay. tasting stale, you know, popped popcorn goes stale quickly. You would definitely need to want to have an oxygen absorber for popped popcorn. So. Okay. All right. So... For all of those in our audience that have commented and were wanting to know the answer, if they stored their their popcorn in Mylar bags with an oxygen absorber, is it still safe to eat? Oh, yes. According to the science, 
Absolutely. As, it's as still long as everything in there is dry. That's the biggest issue. Joe, thank you so much for coming to visit us and teach us this. Is there anything else that we should know? I think the essence of it is, yeah, you want a good seal you uh, and you want it to be dry. Uh, the oxygen absorber is for the flavor uh, retention. And yeah, if it doesn't pop, you can still grind it. Perfect. So all of those worries out there, we don't need to worry anymore. I think that's... No, that you makes really don't have happy. to because the water activities it, uh, would not allow any growth of, as long as you've got a dry environment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe, for, for meeting with us today and for teaching us. And so now for the question of the day, for our food science friend, what other questions do you have about food storage that we might be able to get him to answer? Comment below. And thanks for being right. part of the solution.